Thank you, Sister Jackie. And thank each of you for attending today in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, we do welcome all you today and those watching on live stream to the Restoration Church of Jesus Christ. And we ask that uh, our Lord and Savior be with us. For a call to worship today, I would like to turn to the Doctrine and Covenants in the 85th section. And uh, I would read beginning in 18. And if your eye be single to my glory, your whole body shall be filled with light, and there shall be no darkness in you. And that body which is filled with light comprehendeth all things. Therefore sanctify yourselves, that your minds become single to God. And the days will come that you shall see him, for he will unveil his face unto you. And it shall be in his own time and in his own way, according to his own will. Praise be the name of our God and Lord Jesus, our Savior. We will um, uh, open our hymnals to hymn number 48, Come Thou Almighty Kings. Num hymn number 48. Shall we pray? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for the blessings of the hour. We thank Thee for this gift of life that You have bestowed upon us. And Lord, in this hour, may we set aside the worldly cares and come and unite with thee that our minds, hearts, and souls would be attuned to you and our servant this day. And as each of us bring our worship unto thee, may all the honor, glory, and praise be thine. We ask this in Jesus' holy name, in whom we trust. Amen. Be seated.
for the offertory this morning. I want to, I'm recalled to um, testimonies. One specific testimony that I'm, I remember has really remained in my mind for some years now. I do love the restoration because of the fact the backbone of our belief is our living witness of the Lord in our lives in bearing our testimonies and witnessing of how he has blessed us and remains with us with each step we take. It was some time ago when our uh, brother Roland brought to uh, the attention of the uh, congregation how he was uh, concerned about making an accounting to the bishop. And he was struggling as we all have in making our accounting and also paying our offering unto the Lord who gives us all things for which we need. And they made a sacrifice, he and Kathy. They prayed, they made a sacrifice. They made their accounting and they paid their offering. And Roland witnesses how blessed he was and remains to this day. And we often say we cannot outgive our Lord. And that is true when we do it with the fullness of our heart. And so it is. I just ask today that we bring remembrance to each one of us of those times. For I believe I've heard almost all of you witness of how the Lord has touched you in ways that only he can. So with that, I'm going to ask my brother Jim to come forward to receive the offering. Shall we pray? Holy Father of heaven and earth, we give thee thanksgiving for all the blessings and all we have, even the roofs over our heads. And Lord, as we receive this offering, may this offering be used even for the assistance of putting a roof over the heads of those that have none. May we address the poor, the needy, the naked, the widow, the orphan. And Lord, in doing so, we give this a free will and with the intent of doing thy good for thy purposes on earth and in heaven. I ask in Jesus' holy name, amen. Thank you. And now may we turn in our hymnals to hymn number 342, Take My Life and Let It Be, 342. We will remain seated for this, 
after which our brother Vern Foster will stand and bring the Lord's word today. 342. Good day, everyone. Normally, I would say good day or good morning, but it may not be morning where you are. If you're watching this sometime in the future, it may not be in the morning. So I say unto you, good day. I ran into some adversity already this morning getting here. And I've been preparing for this sermon for weeks. And I got hit pretty hard this morning. I was like, I don't even want to get dressed. I don't feel like I have strength enough to get up and put my clothes on. But God blessed me. Here I am. Amen. That being said, the Lord brought me here. And this is where I need to subside and he needs to rise. I need to step down, set down. He needs to build up and fortify. If you know me, you know I readily admit I'm a sinner. And there are people who would say, well, he's done this and he's done that and I know him. And I would say unto them, I'm sorry. There are those that would say, well, he's always, he was a loser. He's always going to be a loser. I remember when he did this and when he did that. And I would say, I'm sorry, I remember too. But the Lord God has promised me that he, 
If he forgives your sins, he remembers them no more. Therefore, I am a loser. I pray that I can set myself aside and give way to that which the Lord would have me say, that my foolishness would not appear, that my vanity would not appear and my pride, for I am nothing without the Lord. We cannot understand the word of God truly without the assistance of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit living in us gives illumination to the truth of the word of God. I pray that you would hear the word of God today. I know you're saying, well, he stepped up to this pulpit and he's got a, a book with him. Oh, I see he's getting some papers out. Oh, I see he's bald-headed, pretty much. I see he's got a beard. I don't know why he has that beard. I hate beards. You're saying, well, yes, he's not wearing a suit. Well, he does have a necktie on, but I think that's supposed to be mandatory. You were thinking, well, he's obviously overweight and a uh, fat cat doing real well on his own, and uh, why do I need to listen to him? Okay, let that go. But this is not about me. This is not about what you see. This is something meant to be spiritual. In the Restoration, we're used to seeing men behind the speaker, sitting there all stone-faced, as if they're angry at the world. They would not dare to crack a smile. Do not look at what's behind me or behind the speakers. Look to your Father who is in heaven. I've been visiting the Washington Street Restoration Branch just minutes from my home. And because of this, Elena has been able to attend with me. Having been validated as members by one of authority, we have partaken of the sacrament together with the group of believers. What are they like? Like here, they are primarily elderly and small in number. But that's where the difference, that's where the likeness ends. This is the restored church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And if I had my way, I would cross out the word saints and put brothers and sisters of God. For the saints has been used to paint with a big wide brush to cover a variety of people, and it's not accurate. It is said that God does not give revelations anymore, that there are no more prophets. In this church, we know that is a lie. We've had a prophet. People will say, well, I never knew him. I don't know what kind of man he was. I hear tell of him. I would say, read the revelations. Study them. Listen to the Spirit. And like Joseph Smith said to another brother in a challenge, I think it was Martin Harris, he said, you go and you try, and you come back with another revelation and we'll see how it is. And he could not do it. The Spirit would not allow.
How do I dare to speak, preach, or teach with my limited knowledge and my lack of understanding? Even if I am given the gift of knowledge, how can I possibly relay it without the Holy Spirit? I pray that my words today will strengthen and edify. My words run out pretty fast. I breathe too much pollution. As it said on the street, I've killed too many brain cells. I am damaged. I've been corrupted, wounded, practically destroyed, but that is me. Here are some words we know as scriptures from Matthew. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father who is in heaven. We confess we believe in Jesus Christ. What will our confession bring us? But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Shall we deny? What would cause us to deny? Daily pressures of this world and the forces of adversary are constantly at us to deny. Matthew 10, verse 30. Think not that I am come to send peace upon the earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. This is a biblical truth. He who loveth the father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Who, he who takes not his cross and follows after me is not worthy of me. He who seeks to save his life shall, shall lose it. And he who loseth his life for my sake shall find it. How do we go forward with that? Trust in Jesus. He who receiveth you as a person, as a church, are, be, are we being received? Yes, we are. The whole world is watching us today. He says, goes on to say, receiveth me, and he who receiveth me, receiveth him who sent me. Thank God for his grace, his forgiveness, and his mercy. This is one, just one, of the many places I fail as a servant. So many ways I am not worthy. So many ways I'm not received because I don't put anything out. I'm talking to the radio and through the microphone, but the power cord has been unplugged. It's my vain imagination. Forgive me, Father, for I am so weak. Most all believe there is a God with a small g. To most now, it is an unknown God, a God of wealth, power, 
and a servant of man, existing only to supply happiness and comfort to man without causing men's mental distress. This same God is to blame for all the pain and suffering in the world. That's the God the world believes in now. We know different brothers and sisters. Believing in and following are his only begotten. That's where it starts to get interesting. From the book of John 14, 10 and 11, and I will quote scriptures out of the inspired version of the Holy Scriptures. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but of the Father which dwelleth in me. He doth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me the very works' sake. From 3 Nephi 4.45, this is the Book of Mormon. This is the second witness of Jesus Christ. I was with the Father from the beginning. I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and in me hath the Father glorified his name. That is no brag, just fact. Third Nephi five twenty seven. And after this manner you shall baptize in my name, for behold, verily I say unto you that the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are one. And I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and the Father and I are one. From the Doctrine and Covenants 34, 1b. This is the third witness that Jesus is the Christ. I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was crucified for the sins of the world, even as many as will believe on my name, that they may become the sons of God, even one in me, as I am in the Father, and the Father is one in me, that we may be one. Doctor and Covenants 587, 8F. And the Father and I are one, and I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and inasmuch as ye have received me, ye are in me and I in you. Therefore, I am in your midst. Can I get an amen? Amen. Thank you. Doctrine and Covenants 91b, and that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and the Father and I are one, the Father, because he gave me his fullness, and the Son, because I was in the world, and made flesh my tabernacle, and dwelt among the sons of men. 93c and if you keep my commandments you shall receive of his fullness and be glorified in me as I am in the Father therefore I say unto you you shall receive grace for grace Amen. that was a whole string of scriptures from three different witnesses saying unto the world that Jesus Christ that same Jesus of Nazareth is in the Father, and they are one. The testimony of the Book of Mormon is to convince both the Jew and the Gentile of Jesus Christ. There are people out there who would have you say, have you hear their words, they would say, ah, oh, they're Mormons, they worship Joseph Smith. Oh, they're Mormons. They don't believe in anything we believe in. They don't believe in prophecy. And if there are any, they don't come true. Newsflash. We don't come here to worship Joseph Smith. We don't take a day off for his birthday. He died. He was murdered. But he was not resurrected, and we do not claim him to be our Savior. <clears throat> 
Do you get it? It should be remembered that there are no caps or highlighting in scriptures. Important things are repeated instead. And if they're really important, you hear it over and over and over again. Again, I ask, do you get it? Amen. From Colossians 3.1 If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Moroni, Book of Mormon, 9.28 And may the grace of of God the Father, whose throne is high in the heavens, and our Lord Jesus Christ, who sitteth on the right hand of his power, until all things shall become subject unto him, be and abide with you forever. Amen. From the Holy Scriptures, the Bible, Acts 7, 55, 56. But he, referring to Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. This is stated in scripture. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. He's quoted there. Those words were so important, they were taken down, and I can quote them today. It is Jesus Christ standing on the right hand of God. How can you deny that? You know, you believe there is a God. From Mosiah, Book of Mormon. 11, 187, 188. And the Lord said unto me, Marvel not that all mankind, yea, men and women, all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people must be born again. Yea, born of God, changed from their carnal and fallen state to a state of righteousness, being redeemed of God, becoming his sons and daughters, and thus they become new creatures, and thus they do this. Unless they do this, they can, no, can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. Notice the word inherit. It's a gift. He calls you sons and daughters of God, and you're inheriting the kingdom. Doctrine and Covenants 76, 3H. And we heard the voice of bearing record that he is the only begotten of the Father, that by him and through him and of him the worlds were, are and were created, and the inhabitants thereof are begotten sons and daughters unto God. Mosiah 3, 8. And now because of the covenant which he made, you shall be called the children of Christ, his sons and daughters. Ether 178, and in, in me shall all mankind have life and eternally, even they who shall believe on my name, and they shall become my sons and daughters. I could go on, but it gets to be redundant. But remember, the important things are said over and over again. Moroni 7.25, and after he came, men also were saved by faith in his name, and by faith they become the sons of God. Do you get it? Sons and da daughters of God in Christ, 
on the right hand side of the Father, on his throne, given power, have faith, do we have knowledge? If you're in Christ and he's in the Father and he's at the right hand side of the Father, you also are at the right hand side of the Father. Do you not know where you are? Do you not know what powers you have over the adversary? If you will but open your eyes and realize there is nothing spiritually created that can harm you, you're in the safest place right next to God in Jesus Christ. Rejoice in the knowledge. Be of good cheer. Genesis 4, 3. And Satan came among them saying, I am also a son of God. And he commanded them, believe it not. And they believed it not. And they loved Satan more than God. And men began from that time forth to be carnal, sensual, and devilish. Genesis 4, 3. The lie begins. The adversary makes himself known, claiming to be the Son of God. And he commanded people, and they believed him. Genesis 7, 39, 46. The Lord said unto Enoch, Behold, these thy brethren, they are the workmanship of mine own hands. And I gave unto them their intelligence the day I created them. Now that's something to think about, isn't it? Genesis 7, 39. I gave unto them their intelligence the day I created them. We didn't have to get smart. Apparently we were born smart. It's a gift from God. That kind of makes it hard to prove evolution and how we've progressed If God created us, how could we not be perfect? Except the Satan, the adversary would say, you're not perfect, there is no God. Going on, verse 40, And in the Garden of Eden I gave unto man his agency, and unto thy brethren I said, And also gave a commandment that they should love one another and that they should choose me as their father. In the Garden of Eden, we're commanded to love one another. That may be the first commandment you find in the Bible. I'm not sure. It does make me wonder. And that they should choose the Father as their God. But behold, they are without affection, and they hate their own blood. And the fire of my indignation is kindled against them, and in my hot displeasure I will send in the floods upon them, for my fierce anger is kindled against them. Behold, I am God, man of holiness is my name, man of counsel is my name, and endless and eternal is my name also." Wherefore, I can stretch forth my hands and hold all the creations which I have made, and mine eye can pierce them also. God speaks, and the heavens and all creation will weep. 43. And among all the workmanship of my hands, there has not been so great wickedness as among thy brethren. For behold, their sins shall be upon their heads of their fathers. Satan shall be their father, and misery shall be their doom, and the whole heaven shall weep over them, even all the workmanship of my hands. 
What's that he's saying? Did this scripture, this book, these books talk about these people on this planet that we call Earth being created by God who has endless creation and endless worlds and endless works and his eye pierced all of them and this bunch is the worst of the lot. Of all the workmanship of his hands, this causes the heavens to weep. Forty four, therefore, should not the heavens weep, seeing these shall suffer? For behold, these which thine eyes are upon shall perish in the floods, and behold, I will shut them up. A prison have I prepared for them. And he whom I have chosen hath pleaded before my face. Wherefore he suffereth for their sins. And as much as they will repent in the day that my chosen shall return unto me. And until that day they shall be in torment. Wherefore, for this shall the heavens weep, yea, in all the workmanship of my hands. God created a prison for them. Apparently we are on a prison planet. There was war in heaven as you know and Satan and one third of the angels were cast out and they came down to earth and it says in Job that Satan goes back and forth and up and down within the earth And here we are. Is it any wonder we run into trouble? Is it any wonder we fight every moment of every day with all our strength and breath to hang on until the Lord Jesus Christ comes? And praise God the day we look up and we see him in the heavens and we hear the trump. And he comes with the fire. Hallelujah. Doctrine and Covenant 17, 5B, 5D, I'm sorry. We'll start at 5A. Wherefore the Almighty God gave his only begotten Son, as it is written, those scriptures which have been given of him. He suffered temptations, but gave no heed unto them. He was crucified, died, and rose again on the third day, and ascended into heaven to sit down on the right hand of the Father, to reign with almighty power according to the will of the Father, that as many as would believe and be baptized in his holy name and endure in faith to the end shall be saved. Not only those who believed after he came in the meridian of time in the flesh, but all those from the beginning, even as many as were before he came, who believed in the words of the holy prophets, who spake as they were inspired by the gift of the Holy Ghost who truly testified of him in all things, that they should have eternal life as well as those who should come after, who should believe in the gifts and the callings of God by the Holy Ghost, who beareth record of the Father and of the Son, and of which is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are one God, infinite and eternal without end. I hope I've added some clarity to things that have troubled you. I hope you understand now that 
that Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the Father in heaven are one. That Jesus Christ is on the right hand side of the Father in heaven. And that you are the sons and daughters of God. And that you are also in Jesus Christ on the right hand side of the Father in heaven. And no evil, no power can prevail against you. Open your toolbox. Use that spirit. If Satan comes to you, say, get thee hence in the name of Jesus Christ, and he will flee from you. Amen. Scriptures say this has been done, and they heard him wailing and weeping and gnashing his teeth. Do not yield to temptation, but fight the good fight. That's all I know. There's nothing else I can say except those of you who do not have Jesus Christ in your life, believe, come to his church will fill this fountain with water. You go into the water. A servant of the Lord will stand beside you and will raise his hand to the Almighty and say, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. And you will go under the water and you will come up renewed and refreshed a new person. There is no other way. Amen. After that, this may be strange to you, but the power of God will be demonstrated as his servants put their hands upon your head and they anoint you and they pray for you and you are given the gift of the Holy Spirit And that gift will never leave you as long as you love the Lord and endure and hold fast until the very end. So I say unto you, come. Get up off that couch. Get up off that chair. Get up off that pew. Take a step. Move. Show God that you are alive and living and a living being he created. And do something for your own salvation, for your soul. Break those chains, break those bonds. Nothing can hold you back. I don't care. I've lived with addiction. I've lived with sin. I've lost my mind. The Lord gave it back to me again. I've lost everything been down to living in, off the street in my car, sleeping in cramped quarters, waking up in dives with roaches crawling the wall so thick you could hardly think they were wallpaper. I could not find water. I could not find food. But I found the mercy of God. And he said, come, walk away from that and follow me. I have work for you to do. Come, labor with me. For the fields are ripe and the harvest is ready. May you be blessed this day. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Brother Vern. Thy servant has spoken. And I pray that we might internalize it into our hearts.
Now in preparation for closing, may we turn in our hymnals to hymn number 345. 345, My Jesus, I Love Thee. When ready, shall we stand. Closing, I'd like to read out of first out of John chapter eight, verse twelve. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Holy Father. Thou, Son, Jesus Christ, is the light and life. Let us walk in your pathway of light unto righteousness. Let us be healed. Let us remember the words our brother bespake today from thy holy scriptures. 
even thy word of power. Blessed be thy name. And as we go to our homes, may our homes be that place of refuge, even a fortress, against the evil and darkness. And may we live in that light, your light, O oh God. May we remain yours, believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.